still does not um, say that that person, upon my interpretation of it, that that person shall be the speaker. But what, Meaning what? it's mandatory for that person to be, to become, and remain the speaker. But does this not suggest to you that the, the, the 18 positives would become weightier than the 18 negatives? No, it is not conclusive. I mean, according to what the, the Sanya says. It is not conclusive because mm -hmm. the language there is not conclusive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mr. George, what, what is your take on this? Uh, well, this is a point I had looked at um, mm -hmm. since the last time when I was on mm -hmm. the program and I mentioned it then. But it appears that while I take Hector's point fully, mm -hmm. I think there might be room for further argument because if one is to take the interpretation of negative, then it means we must also look higher up and look at the interpretation that must be given to the phrase be agreed to. It says, if that proposal be agreed to, the member or other person so cho chosen shall be speaker. Now, what do we mean when we say be agreed to? Could it simply mean that one person, if one member out of a 36 seat parliament agrees then that person remains a speaker in the absence of the negative in so the thing is the agreed may actually carry the very same meaning that the negative carries in the sense that the agreed appears to me is open to an interpretation that that agreement must be agreement by the house which in that sense, would be agreement by the a majority, majority of and the House. furthermore, you must then turn to the Interpretation Act, Chapter 301, and you will see that the different canons of interpretation, what was the intent, what is the purpose, what is the literal construction, how do they reconcile to each other, and how should the final uh, judgment be? Mm. It's very difficult. Gentlemen, I will simply say to you that it is well known in parliamentary practice that one talks about negative resolutions and the like. You don't have to go to the Interpretation Act for that. It is a very simple, everyday practice in Parliament where one has negative resolutions. And the meaning of that, I say to you, is that you have more people voting negatively than positively. And all I'm saying to you is, I'm not arguing the issue, I am simply saying mm -hmm. that nobody seems to be raising the issue that is set out in Standing okay. Order 3, 3. And, and all I'm saying is, you may disagree with me, but all I'm saying is that it states very clearly there, mm -hmm. it states very clearly that if a proposal is negative, the person cannot be speaker. Mm -hmm. And it also would suggest mm -hmm. that if the proposal is not negative, the person could indeed be speaker. And I am saying mm -hmm. that when, Mr. When, the Prime, when Prime Minister Manning and the Attorney General and the, and, and, and the leader of the House elect. confidently say that they are going to Parliament, that a speaker will be elected, that they may not get the speaker that they want, but they may indeed get a speaker who is nominated by the other side. It may well be that this is what is in their mind, the question of negative, a negative vote. And indeed, it would boil down to whether it will be the PNM or the UNC that would first catch the eye of, of the, clerk. the clerk of the house and put the first name proposed as speaker. I simply say that. I'm not prepared to argue. Okay. I simply point mm -hmm. out no, but that, 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 is, that, that, that is why in law, in the written law, we have different in, um, canons of interpretation and all written law by which the country is to be dependent on has to be interpreted in mm. in that way and this is why this is why you have um, uh, the type of interpretation which you are saying 
and which I have taken the, another view. And I believe there might be other views, but I, am, I am, want to be on record as vehemently disagreeing in accordance with the written law to you, but do you not practice, not do parliamentary you, practice. Do you also disagree that it's, it, it, it suggests a window of opportunity? It certainly does. I, it, it, I, it, it, you are putting it, words in my mouth. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm asking you. I'm, I'm asking you. I'm asking you. I am trying to be objective, uh. so I, 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 I would restrain myself with humility from answering that leading okay, question. Okay, um, we, we have, we have, we have a, a caller from Arima, but you know we still have to deal with the question of, uh, that was asked by a previous caller about the current term of the speaker and when it ends. Yes, if yeah. I may just stand to that. The, the um, standing orders provide that the speaker shall remain in office until such time as a new speaker is elected. Mm -hmm. Um, the result is that when all other members of parliament except um, people who hold ministerial office mm -hmm. um, uh, go out of um, existence, when their, their position ends with the dissolution of the House, the Speaker and the President of the Senate remain in office mm -hmm. until such time as the first sitting of the new session of parliament. I want okay. to openly agree with Mr. Hector McLean on that. <laughs> okay, we have two callers, Arima Digo Martin. Arima, welcome. Good evening. Thank you. Good evening. Yes. I would like to know if the voting will be secret ballot or show of hands. I didn't hear that, that um, when they replied. Hmm. Could you please let me know? Thanks. It would yes. Be it would be neither. As Hector well, it's a yay nay situation. Yay and then the clerk can call for division. Um, earlier we dealt with that and uh, yeah. Mr. McLean pointed out mm -hmm. That it is it is done as you know as it, as any other business yeah. of the house. But uh, I will just to, just to touch again on the point that Hector has raised, the I am with him entirely on the question of the negative because as I said, it's something we raised since last I was on the show. Mm -hmm. However, the I think that it's an interesting argument, and other sides can be raised in that people can then ask, what do you mean when you say be agreed to? Because if negative, I mean, I know it has special connotations, but if at the end of the day negative means that you must have more than Voting 18, north, yes. then the question arises, doesn't that also apply to agreed to? Because it's not simply that if the proposal be negative, if it's not negative, then the person automatically becomes speaker. It says, if that proposal be agreed to, you see, where you have the automatic occupation of office of speaker is where no second person is proposed. That obviously will not happen. Okay, um, I think Mr. Pandey has, he has thousands lined up right. to propose. Yeah. So therefore, once you have more than one person proposed, there's no automatic confirmation in the office. Mm -hmm. The standing orders then go on to say, um, if another member if another such member or person willing to serve if elected be proposed and seconded, the clerk shall propose the question that the member who was first proposed should be speaker, if that proposal be agreed to. So all I'm saying is that it raises interesting legal questions, interesting right. legal arguments. Um, one can take the view that agreed to may simply mean that one person could agree to it, but I don't think that a court of law would look at it so simplistically. Mm -hmm. You know. Okay, we have two callers, Diego Martin, Chase Village. Diego Martin, I know you've been waiting for some time. Good Hello? Evening. Yes. Uh, um, just to go back to an earlier point made by uh, Dr. Muma, Dr. Moonan, uh, this gentleman who calls himself a political scientist, uh, and the crossing of the floor, which might come into play on that day, and which Mr. McLean would have practical experience of, perhaps. <laughs> he, he was suggesting that a judge uh, um, apparently overruled part of the Constitution. I am not aware that a judge can ha has that power. The Constitution is the supreme law. Is that correct that that occurred, Mr. McLean? And, and uh, the problem, as far as I understand it, is that the simply that the standing orders have never been amended to put it into effect? That is, that is how I, re I recall. Uh, what, you know, they, the what, they, what the court held is that it was uh, that a member of parliament 
can move across um, to any political party having been elected to the House of Representatives. And we have, to, to my left, we have um, evidence of that. No, I don't think you have evidence of that. The facts were that this member did not move to another political party. He simply resigned from the party to which he belonged. Well, I beg your pardon, but we have... Quite different. Yeah, okay, I beg mm -hmm. your pardon, but we have evidence of that in, in um, um, uh, Do Dr. Vincent Lass... And Dr. And, Griffith. And Dr. Griffith. Yes. So I uh, do accept my apologies. And indeed, the position in the case of Dr. Vincent Lass and Dr. Griffith was that there is something wanting in the standing orders which okay. have not been properly mm -hmm. um, which have not been properly amended mm -hmm. and therefore one could not give effect to that which is law in the okay. uh, crossing uh, of the floor in the crossing of the floor act okay we have uh, chase village on the line good evening chase village hello chase village good night gentlemen yes yes we're hearing I, you i have been listening to all of you your discussion and um two issues came to my mind Firstly, I should like to say that um, it has been noticed for some time that people enter into a party, and after some time when they are there, they walk across the floor. They go to another party. This seems to be becoming a way where cowards who cannot really um, wade their through by courage and strength but serving in the party which they elect to be allured by probably some gift or some reward by crossing a party, party line. However, the point now, we are at a crisis, and I too would very much like to see this crisis come to an end. But um, as I see it, the best means open now to us in this country to have a new election. Whatever be the end, I think the new, a new election is the answer. Thank you. Yeah, well, you, know, you know my view okay. to that. Uh, Diego Martin on the line now. Uh, welcome, Diego Martin. Hello. Good evening, yes. Are you hearing me? Yes, we're hearing. It seems to me that the UNC intends to make a puppet show of our parliament. We're talking about a thousand people coming there to be, and going to be nominated for the post of speaker. I mean, he's making a whole joke of the whole thing. Um, it has, has the, could, Mr. could Mr. McLean tell me whether the president has any say in this at all? One, two, who can, um, can the speaker, can the clerk of the house adjourn the house in the absence of a speaker? Please, thank you. Um, first of all, His Excellency the President is not in any way involved in, um, in, in what would happen on Friday, apart from having issued a proclamation to the uh, summoning the, um, the Parliament and appointing a time and place for it to meet for its first session after um, the holding of the general election. Um, His Excellency the President is not involved and um, I don't think should be brought into it. Um, on the question of the adjournment of the House, the standing orders um, say nothing about the, um, the clerk being able to adjourn, but one is to point out that there is, there is really, um, there, there is no order paper. There is nothing on the order paper. The business of the House is simply to, um, to elect a speaker, a deputy speaker, and to administer the oath of allegiance of all of the members of the House. And indeed, when, when those things are finished, the business of the House for the day is really ended. And um, I am myself and Claire as the whole point is that if a speaker is not elected, it means that um, we would not have the several members embarking upon um, taking their oaths. And um, I myself 
don't think that it is any big deal in terms of um, the adjournment of the House. The standing orders provide under normal circumstances that by a certain hour um, the House should be, um, should be adjourned unless, of course, there's a motion to the effect that the House continue to sit. Mm -hmm. But one can't get to that stage because um, be, no, if, if, a speaker, mm -hmm. if a speaker is not, in fact, elected. But as I say, um, it may be that um, a speaker may be elected. Using that little window of opportunity. <laughs> it, it may be elected, and <laughs> all the fears that are being ex expressed um, may come to naught. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah, well, what, what it seems that the uh, yes. members of the UNC are relying on, from the utterances I've seen in the media, it appears that they're relying on the provision which speaks of a sitting or a session of parliament. And I think they're relying on that to say that, look, if no speaker is elected, then this cannot be considered a sitting sit or a session. So therefore, the automatic provision as to adjournment at 8 p.m. cannot That's kick in. Right. But the point is, I think that is quite a nebulous argument, and it's open to, it's open to debate. Mm -hmm. it's open Gentlemen, we're coming to the end of the program. We, we'll take one more caller, point 14. Good evening. I Hello. know you. Yes, good evening. Good evening. I'm calling from Guapo, actually. And yes. what I have is a question and a comment. The question is um, the, the criteria for nominating persons uh, as likely speakers of the House, whether there's a specific criteria for that, and if you could inform us, general, the general public, what that criteria is. That is the question. But the comment is, having heard that Mr. Pandey has 1,000-odd people that he can afford to nominate, um, I'm wondering whether one can be allowed to just keep going on and on and on nominating. And some nominations may very well be frivolous. I'm saying that based on the criteria. So if you could enlighten us what the criteria is, um, I'll be happy. OK. Section uh, 50, uh, section uh, 50, subsection 3 says a person, um, the speaker, subsection 2, it says the speaker may be elected either from among the members of the House of Representatives who are not ministers or parliamentary secretaries or subject to subsection 3 from among persons who are not members of either house. Mm -hmm. And then subsection 3 goes on to say a person who is not a member of either house shall not be elected speaker where A, he is not a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago or B, he is a person disqualified for election as a member of the House of Representatives by virtue of subsection 1 of section 48 or any law enacted in pursuance of subsection 2 of that oh, section. We touched yeah. on that. Yes. Um, yes. Very well. Well, gentlemen, in, in the few minutes we have, well, I guess it's about two or three minutes we have, um, I want to find out from you what, what do you think in a nutshell is going to take place in Parliament on Friday, I hear from Mr. McLean that um, you know things would probably not be as dramatic as uh, the press and some members of the public are making it out to be, mm -hmm. and that perhaps um, the, the section, the relevant section of the standing orders, would provide the out, uh, so to speak. Mr. McLean. Well, it is my view. I, I do think that um, a speaker will be elected. I, I feel that um, on a proper interpretation of the standing orders, um, it would be possible for that to happen um, with an 1818 vote. I do not think that um, there would be the crossing of the floor by, um, by or, or there would be voting uh, of uh, members of the UNC with the PNM or members of the PNM with the UNC. I, I, re I rather discount that. And I do think that one will call to aid um, standing Order 3, and that as um, some people confidently expect, I'm, I'm not being confident, but mm -hmm. I, as some people confidently expect, a speaker will in fact be appointed, and one will be able to get on with the business of the country. Dr. Muller. It, it is my sincere expectation oh, uh, that a speaker should be elected, but there is no basis in Standing Order 3 I vehemently disagree uh, that that can be used as authority for a speaker to be elected. Mm -hmm. Mr. George. Well, I, I wouldn't vehemently disagree. I would 
beg most respectfully to differ in the interpretation that uh, Mr. McLean has proposed, in that, as I said, I am with him entirely on the question of negative, but I think that once you get that out of the way, it then opens the Pandora's box of the question of be agreed to. And my position is further fortified. If one looks at sub rule three of standing order three, which says at the end, but if the proposal be negatived, the clerk shall propose a like question in respect of any other such member or person who has been proposed and seconded until the question is carried in favor of the members or other persons so proposed. So therefore, it seems to suggest that the same meaning or weight you have to attach to negative in that negative means more than 18, then it appears that when you speak of agreed to, it ought properly to carry the same weight. And particularly when you look at the end here where they say until the question is carried in favor. And okay. In other words, well, the purpose, what is the purpose yeah. of the stand in order? I okay. agree. All right, gentlemen, I want to thank you very much. That hour has come around very quickly this yes. evening. <laughs> and I must thank you for taking the time out to come and share some of your knowledge That's and questions thing. and observations with us. We look forward to what is going to happen on Friday. I don't think that anybody can put their head on a block and say that this is going to happen or that is not going to happen. But we all wait anxiously to see uh, how the business of the country will proceed. Of course, we want to inform you that uh, although the press, the media are not allowed to carry the proceedings in Parliament live, we will be outside of Parliament with a live broadcast of the activities around the Red House and keeping you up to date as, 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 as much as we can possibly do of what is going on within. So stay tuned to channels 2 and 13 uh, for further programming and of course uh, 1.30 on Friday. So thanks for viewing and have a good night.